days and um it's been it's been really challenging because you know like you're you're a melbourne girl so you know that you know melbourne people are all about getting out and about and socializing and you yeah. know that, that's uh, that's what we do and even through uh, even through winter that's what everyone does but um that's also been the brakes have been put on everything yeah it's really it's really confronting i mean it's challenging for people in different ways i think depending on their circumstances you know there's a lot of people dealing with isolation yeah. <laughs> at the other end of the spectrum there's people dealing with kind of you know over too much time with people like yeah you know, I've got friends who are just like, I love my family, but I'd love to just not see them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing about isolation, right, is that, um, you know, you're isolated with, with your loved ones, but everyone needs their own time too, don't they? Yeah, and, you know, people's living situations really play a part in that. Mm. It's, uh, it's definitely interesting times, and it's interesting to think how far will this go? And, and, you know, I was talking to Anne the other day about it and I said, do you think that, um, you know, once we get through this, that everyone will just forget about it and life will go back to normal or do you think this is like a big catalyst of change in our lives as we know it? Yeah, I think it is. Um, there'll be a little bit, I don't know, I guess there's a couple of ways to think about it. It kind of feels like, you know, like a slingshot, you know, things have been pulled really far in one direction. And then when that releases, maybe I feel like there will be some spring back um, yeah. in the other direction. There'll be, but it'll be it'll be different in you know different parts of the population. So I think financially, a lot of people have been quite significantly impacted. So they maybe wouldn't have the financial means that they had before to like go on overseas trips or do that kind of thing that has been curtailed. Um, yeah. But there will be people who kind of, you know, want to go out and party and have a good time. Um, but whether or not circumstances allow that will also be part of the equation, you know. Like, and that's the thing, like when does it open up and when does it uh, look like, you know, something is, you know, something different is going to happen or, or that we get a bit more freedom back or it's, um, you know, all those sort of things are, are unknowns at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I've been, um, I was listening to a talk last night by a lady who teaches in ethics and yeah. she was talking about the balance between freedom and responsibility. So mm -hmm. you might have the right to do something, but is it, you know, what's the path, path of least harm, even if you have that right? Yeah. And it's hard, you know, every everyone has their own set of values that influence their own decision-making and you can see it play out in the community or even in your own friendship circle you know, like the inner judgment that comes up when someone doesn't have the same set of values as you do and they make a decision that you are like, oh, my God, I can't believe you do that. Or, <laughs> you know, uh, like I've seen that in the community happening in, in Victoria, you know, people like, you know, put, like pointing out things that other people are doing and commenting on it or, you know, feeling deeply offended by people's choices. But, yeah, I think there are really big questions that we could all address for ourselves about or investigations that we can have for ourselves and what are your core drivers and what are your values and how can you maintain those for yourself and what are the consequences of those if you do or don't maintain them? You know, yeah. consequences oh, yeah. for other people or are there consequences for yourself? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. And it's, you know, and on that point too, like it's really interesting seeing all that play out on the social media platforms. Well, yes. It's, you know, that, that. Battleground, modern day battleground, right? Uh, it is. Like I literally today have just, um, I've, I've said to myself, right, I'm limiting and cutting right back on my That's Instagram. Really and um, and I've, de I've just deleted Snapchat, not that I really ever used it, I've just deleted my Facebook app. Right. Because... The time yeah, that's the amazing time you'll have to do it, other creative projects. Exactly, because you do get sucked into that feed and you get sucked into reading shit. And I'm like, oh, my God, why am I reading this stuff? Because it's just people going to war with each other over differing opinions, which is, you know, which is great. I, like I think, and I'm a massive believer, that people should debate over a lot of different things. But it's just it, it, it's coming from a place of, you know, like you're saying, that person doesn't have the same view as me. It's time to go into battle. It's not necessarily trying to understand their point of view or get them to understand your point of view. It's just like, well, this is what I'm saying and this is what's right and if you don't agree, let's go. Yeah. It's um, 
interesting times. Like the social media platforms give people a lot of uh, different things that they maybe didn't have access to before, soapboxes and mm. a, like a little bit of anonymity, so to speak. Like mm. there's a distance, obviously, between me saying something to your face, right, if we were in the physical proximity yep. um, and being online and not knowing the person even that you are commenting on, like you're just taking a snippet of their brain dump that you've read on paper and yep. making value-based judgments in what they've said. Mm. Uh, and, it, yeah, it can be a little bit – I think that removal kind of gives people more licence or gives people more ability to say things that they maybe wouldn't. Yeah, 100%. And, this, you know, like, Nine times out of ten, there's generally a, a good story behind what people are saying. You know, there's, the, the, people are giving an opinion for a reason or for a thought or for this or for whatever that is, but on that sort of a platform, you're totally discounting where they've got to this thought rationale from and how they've got to that and why they're thinking that. You don't really care. You're just like, this is what I think and you're wrong and you're an idiot. Yeah. I think to each their own. Some people do go down that path, but... Mm. I'm sure that there are lots of people who just, you know, hop back and, like, have a popcorn. That's better than watching a Netflix series, like, isn't it? Really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's better than watching a movie sometimes. Yeah, but I think it's nice to take a bit of space from that stuff, particularly if you have noticed that it's having some kind of negative impact on you as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of those questions that, you know, I always go back and ask myself is, you know, how is this serving me and is, is this loving towards me? It's really nice foundational questions. Well, you know, when you ask that question, you get a pretty straight answer from it's either from your inner dialogue or from an external divine source or wherever, whatever you believe and where it comes from. There's a pretty quick answer to, uh, to the question. Sure. We've got a second person today that I've spoken to who is departing from the social media world. Right. See, I reckon there's a lot of, well, I spoke to Ange this morning. She's doing it. Oh, you're a third person. <laughs> yeah. Mark has gone back to an old flip phone so he's got no social media. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One of the girls from the uh, from the office um, was messaging me and, and she got me onto this um, uh, doco that I watched last night and it was called The Social Dilemma. And, Dilemma, yeah. yeah. So she watched that and she was like, right, that's it, no more social media. I'm like, all right. So I watch it, I'm like, yep, done, bang, I'm in. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it gives you, it does, because you get into that habit of you look at this, you look at that, you scroll through this, you scroll through that, da 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 and you're like, holy shit, 40 minutes has just gone past. You have to buy the vortex, man. Yeah, and that's, that's you know, cool. that's a lot of time you could have spent with yeah. loved ones or reading or. Anything. Like, mm. And that documentary speaks quite strongly to the fact that that's what it was designed to do. Absolutely. It's designed to hook you in and be addictive. And yeah. Keep your attention yeah. there so that they can use that to market things to you. But the scariest part that I found in that whole thing was um, that they can tailor things to each individual person and it actually has the ability to change your personality to a point. Yeah. I mean, and ch change the way you think. Yeah, which is what I was going to say before when you were like, you know, these things are coming into my feed. I'm like, they're coming in for a particular reason. You yeah, know? to influence you in a certain way. Well, yeah, or they they have they are coming in based on your previous behaviour that they have been tracked. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like what you engage with then perpetuates more come of that coming into your field. Yeah, yeah. So that's so. interesting. So where in the world are you at the moment? I'm in sunny Queensland, I stay with friends. <laughs> ah. um, yeah, so I feel quite lucky. I feel yeah. very privileged to have the opportunity to be here, particularly when my, like, most of my loved ones are still facing lockdown. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I left Melbourne in June and yeah. been yeah, away. So. Yeah. Missed it by that much. Uh, lucky um, you. You yeah. have a, but you have a habit of, of you know, travelling because obviously, so yeah. you are a yoga, an amazing yoga teacher. You do a lot of meditation teachings, and you've got this innate ability to be missing things. all these oh crazy God. things throughout your whole like <laughs> life. Yeah, crazy stories for sure. Like. 
missing all kinds of natural disasters in locations where my retreats have been run. <laughs> <laughs> I have been creatively lucky, actually, um, with that kind of thing, timing wise. So I'm not sure who's looking out for me, but I'm very grateful. Absolutely. <laughs> great show, but yeah, I have. And I, feel, I just came home from teaching full time in Belgium at the start of this year and mm. had every. Initially, I mean, I came to Australia on a return ticket to Belgium and didn't get back on the plane. And then, like, two weeks, or oh, well, probably a month later, coronavirus really hit the fan and um, I was like, wow, that was, you know, opportune timing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So it wasn't necessarily a conscious, like, I, yeah, you know, in January I was just like, I'm going to come back to Australia, came back to my mum's birthday Mm -hmm. and then stayed and it's just been really great actually and because I have travelled a lot, it can be a bit habitual for me to constantly be on the move. Uh, yeah. So being forced into lockdown in March was quite uh, also a bit of a gift, really, to just yeah. be still yeah. for a little while. And, um, yeah, I think stillness is a very, well, you know, like, it's like the noise kind of gets quietened mm. from the outside world. Like there's nothing... I can be guilty of a little bit of FOMO. <laughs> I'm You're a bit out. Yeah. So basically it took the entire world shutting down for me to stay still. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of good things that I come out of that. I'm not missing out on anything. <laughs> yeah. And, and, well, that's right. You're not missing out on anything in particular because, yeah, yeah everyone's, um, everyone's at home. But, yeah, yeah there's, there's been some beautiful things that have come out of it as well, like yeah. you know, people getting in touch with themselves, people spending more time with their family, you know, and, and you know, one massive thing um, for me, and I've been talking to a lot of people about it lately, is, is really focusing and living in that present moment because people will often live so much in the past and then they're always looking to the future for the stuff they haven't got or the stuff they need to do or the stuff they want to do to fulfil themselves. But when you can actually just sit down and really be present, and look around at all the things and all, you know, who you are as a person, it's quite amazing. Confronting, it's amazing. Wow, there's a, you know, there's a massive part of it that's confronting, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I think like perpetual motion, you know. Yeah. It keeps you, it's a great avoidance technique, technique or tactic. Well, absolutely. So when you have that opportunity and you've got, you, you know, you're forced to just sit in that present moment, you have the ability to learn so much about yourself. Yeah, and and you know some of the things that come up, uh, uh, you know they're really challenging and they're really tough. Yeah. But once you've learned those things, you get you know you can really push forward into a, an amazing direction. Yeah, they open they open some doors. I think. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I know. I feel like I got really lucky to have at that time at the start of the year. Yeah. And definitely used it. You know, a lot of. You know, personal reflection, yeah. um, which is powerful. And I think they do, like maybe those periods come in everyone's lives at different times, you know, for various reasons. Uh, they can come through, you know, health breakdowns. It's kind of like if the body, if you don't listen to your body when it's whispering, it learns to scream until yeah. you do. And lots yeah. of people have big health breakdowns and they might lose, like, be injured and lose their outlet of exercise, you know, that they've always used to manage whatever their, you know, feelings and emotions are and then all of a sudden they can't do that anymore and they're faced to, or, you know, faced with having to sit with some of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so it happens to everyone in really different ways but I feel like it's been a bit of a global, you know, opportunity for people to do it all at the same time. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And so, well, how do you? And and this is some, something that I ask everyone. How do you um, offer advice to people, especially in a time like this, that are going through some, you know, really bad anxiety or really bad depression? You know, and and the message that I try and get across to everyone that I speak to that's going through that is is to say, hey, you know, we've all been there. We've all gone through this sort of stuff. But what are some of those key drivers to get out of that situation? Um, I mean, I think one of the big ones is just accepting that maybe there's nothing wrong with the state that you're in. I think we're very programmed in the Western world to label 
to have like an like we believe that there's a norm or there's kind of a midpoint that everything is normal and then if you're off that midpoint you are then diagnosed with something that makes you other than normal so you know maybe we call it anxiety or maybe we call it depression but in actual fact they're just you know there are a spec- there's a spectrum of normal there's a spectrum of humanity and there's a spectrum of feelings along that and at certain times we feel different things on that spectrum. It's just that we've labelled some as good and bad. And then when we end up feeling things that we've decided are bad, we're like, oh, we don't want to feel this anymore. So we should get out of it. Yeah. But those feelings are there for a reason. They're basically just full of information that we can mine to find out why mm. that feeling is there. Mm. It's not that bad reason. And it, it, yeah, so it's part of it is is looking at why those things are there and, and having some is it is it having self realization around that and saying okay well this is something that I need to work through that it's okay that these things come up yes yeah, and it's okay yeah. to be feeling like this and just you know do you journal through them do you meditate through them so many different ways everyone mm. there's different you know different strokes for different folks and there's so many millions of different ways that people can manage what's coming up for them um yeah. and it, it takes a little bit of experimentation i think to find what works for you yeah and that might be talking to someone it might be journaling for yourself it might be doing meditative practices it could be moving your body in a physical way yeah um because you know, emotions get trapped in us in all kinds of different ways and we have generally different almost like learning styles or communication styles with our intuition or with information. So we, some people might, like I'm a real feeling and visual person, so mm. I feel things in my body quite strongly. Yeah. And other people might, you know, have visions or different ways of seeing things. They might hear sounds or... Yeah, there's a whole range of different ways that people can communicate with the outside world and with their own kind of inner messaging. Mm-hmm. So it's starting to become familiar with what those signals are and yeah. what they might and then basically starting a communication pathway with them. So how to talk to, how to listen to yourself and then how to communicate back. Because yeah. your body, if your body has got a symptom, if there's something that's arising in your body, like the symptom is not the problem. Yeah. The symptoms a message yeah it's got something it's it's giving you information and you need to decode that yeah yeah it's telling you there's something i'm going here you need to deal with some shit yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. it's uh, interesting i was having a chat to someone the other day and they said that um joe rogan has uh has said that before he gets on a flight to go anywhere he will have a, a shit ton of um edibles so with, with you know, the, the weed ones that you can get in, in California, he'll have a heap of them to completely freak himself out and then get on the plane so he's got really bad anxiety because he believes that these are things that if he's still hanging on to something, he needs to deal with it. So he forces himself to deal with it. That's an extreme, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone yeah. No, I wouldn't know that, but it's, you know, it's, it's, I suppose the lesson that I was, you know, that I was getting out of it was, um, you know, that's, that's probably pretty extreme, but, you know, coming face to face with some of those things, because we've all got shit that's buried inside us and we've all got stuff that's, that's okay. super, super deep. Yeah. And I think part of that, like what you were saying as well is, is recognizing that there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make you, uh, a, a, you know, bad, no. weak, anything like that. It's just. You know, life, life's tough. It is. Being human is really challenging. Yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. Complex, confusing little creatures and then yeah. we have to interact with each other, which, you know, yeah. is by 10 million. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and everyone's quirkiness is like pinging off each other. So. Yeah. And there's a lot of external influences around us, like, you know, like social media, like people, all these things that are happening. So it's, it's hard to try and filter some of that stuff out if you're getting bombarded with it. Sure, the structure of society, I would say, is one of the main illness-causing uh, things that we are dealing with. It's really, in the Western world, we live really in a really unhealthy manner. Mm. Out of sync with natural cycles, it's full of environmental toxins in our food, you know, it's pretty 
driven by unnatural time expectations and a whole bunch of social expectations that we've created that aren't necessarily serving our health and well-being. Mm. But we've still embedded those in our belief systems because that's how we've been raised. It's kind of in the collective belief system of our societies and it's really hard to deprogram yourself from that. Mm. Right? Yeah. So if you all of a sudden feel like, oh, wow, I don't feel like I fit into, you know, normal society, it's like, well, what's wrong with me? And maybe there isn't actually something wrong with you, but you're human. Yeah, you are human. You're, and you might be just be responding to a deeper call that is giving you information that yes, you're right. This isn't right for you, and it's not right for ninety nine point nine percent of the population. Yeah. <laughs> but they're still kicking along with the, you know, with the script. So, absolutely. And what about um, so one topic that you're going to be? I know you'll be a pro on. Can I call you a yogi? Is that right to call you a yogi? Oh, I can call me yogi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Obviously, you're a bit of a yoga guru. Well, and, and, you know, you can deny it, but you are to me a yoga guru. Um, so what are the, you know, some of the benefits of yoga? No, it's a really fascinating practice that has been around for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And I like that it's quite holistic in nature. So I like to call what has translated to the West the physical practice of yoga as the gateway drug. So most people come to yoga on the mat. So they come for a physical practice of some description, whether that's, you know, athletic and sport-like or therapeutic and, um, you know, rehabilitative in nature. So I think a lot of people are just like, oh, you've got a sore back, you should go to yoga. And then people find themselves in a yoga class and they don't necessarily know what they've signed up for, but they've heard a bit about it, it's good for you. Um, and that's a really, that's most people's in to the practice, but that's really one very small part of what yoga has the capacity to offer if you want to engage with it. Um, so it was, that was definitely the path for me. I just kind of accidentally landed in a yoga class through some friends and the physical practice was really powerful for me, but it was maybe less powerful. It was really powerful for building discipline. Yeah. And it was really powerful for teaching me what I call an emotional vocabulary. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm feeling all of these things. Like I would go to yoga and I would, like, cry for 90 minutes. (laughs) Um, But it was great, you know. And then it took me – so it took me a little while to dive a little bit deeper into the philosophical background that underlies some of the physical practices. And there's a lot of value in those as well. And so there's a whole, depending, there's many lineages of yoga. Um, so there's many different ways to get involved in the practice yeah. uh, from a physical, philosophical standpoint. Um, but meditation is a really powerful tool. Yeah. They use the word pranayama to describe the breathing practices that they do in yoga. And they are also an incredibly powerful physiological management technique. Yeah. Um, because as humans we have the capacity to consciously choose how we breathe so we're not just always responding to what our physical body is doing. So, you know, obviously if you run, you'll breathe a little harder because you need more oxygen to fuel the functionality of your body when you're increasing your activity. But at the same time, if you want to calm yourself, we can choose to breathe differently and impact our physiological stage. So so how important is that, you know, for breathing? Like breathe and, and doing different practices of breathing. It just change your life. Yeah. Hundred percent. And that can change from state. You, that can change you from a state that you're in, and then having a certain breathing practice to taking you to another state. Yeah, totally. Within seconds, within minutes. Absolutely, within seconds. Yeah. 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 It's, it's... Um, so predominantly, in terms of prescribing yoga or breathing techniques. Mostly I would use them to make people feel more calm, but you can use them for invigorating as well. So you can, so basically hyperventilation means that you're breathing a little bit faster and that generally triggers your system to become activated. So yeah. it starts to, you know, starts a little bit more blood flow around your body. Yeah. But they have, studies have shown that the simplest way to calm your nervous system or one of the most simple ways to calm your nervous system, basically to lower your heart rate, all you need to do is breathe out longer than you breathe in. Yeah. And you are naturally building calm. 
Mm, the respiratory the difference between the in and out breath. Yeah. You breathe out longer than you breathe in. You are naturally just kind of bringing your nervous system on a gentle down slide into a little bit more of a calm space. So it's a really simple tool and you can change state really quickly. Yeah, it's, it's, I've, done, I've tried the, um, the Wim Hof breathing techniques. Hey, I don't know. I haven't experienced his work. Ah, uh, so, so one of them was, um, and, and, and so I've done it a few times, and it's where you have to sit there and you like, literally are sucking in all the air that you can and then breathing it out, breathing it out, and just repeating that, and you've got to do it 30 times. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, so on the last one, which is 30, you breathe everything out and you sit there for two minutes with taking no breath. Yeah. So you go into like a, a meditative state and the first two times I tried it, I was, I was like, oh, I got to like a minute and a bit and, I was there. <laughs> and there was nothing left. But by the third time I had got two minutes, I was like, wow, and that was an achievement in itself. But yeah. just the calmness and the stillness that I felt okay. in, in that moment and then coming out of it, I was like, wow, just it didn't feel as if I needed air. I didn't. I wasn't, you know, freaking out about it, and my whole mind and body just felt very calm. Yeah. So there's, I think, there's a couple of things at play there. There's the, you know, oxygenation of your blood or the O2 CO2 balance, but there's also the discipline element or the attention element where you have chosen to commit to something, and that's very much the path of meditation. So when you train your mind to basically do what you say as opposed mm. to what it wants. Yeah. Powerful things can happen. And training, basically training your attention is the work of meditation. Like yeah. one of the ways that you can work with meditation. There are definitely other practices which I think are incredibly powerful. Uh, so being able to understand or separate your identity as a little human mm. um, from the fact that you are just consciousness embodied uh, can be a very powerful tool in detaching from a whole lot of stuff that we make important that maybe isn't super important. Yeah. Inner things. Yes, absolutely. And does that, so one of the things that I, you know, that I always get out of it is, um, especially with, with meditation is it's a really good tool to assist in my focus because, you know, everyday life we've got so many things going on and our brain is going a bazillion miles an hour and and so many people say I can't meditate because my brain is just going so fast and da 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 but for me what I've really found going through that meditation process is it's somewhere where I can sit and I have to focus on just sitting here yeah yeah well, yeah I choose to I don't have to I choose to <laughs> so I choose to just focus on being still and being in this moment and it gives me what I find it gives me the ability outside of that to be able to um, focus on other things and not be jumping around a million miles an hour an excellent tool for training your attention span yeah that's and that's a bit, that's a really good entry level to meditation is learning to choose where you direct your focus and it can benefit you in so many different ways like you're speaking to it from a work perspective or you know for anyone who's studying being able to hold your attention effectively for periods of time sports people that's really effective for Um, and if you can move as you as you learn to hold your attention for longer and longer periods of time then you can start to use that in certain ways as well and even i think for meditation i mean there's a few different streams of meditative practices so there's mindfulness-based practices and then there's the attention-based practices that you're describing and they've both got lots of value for learning how to engage with your own mind, your consciousness, yeah. and then how that consciousness then interacts with things, other forms of consciousness that you interact with, that you meet along the way. So it's been a really interesting journey to dive into how the, the nature of the mind because complex right yeah it plays a huge part in how we experience the world it's like the brain can't differentiate between what it sees in reality and the reality that you show it inside your mind so yeah. what's yeah. that environment that you're actually creating yeah because it's you know you are the master of your environment aren't you well we ideally would like to be but mm. 
sometimes that master's running a little bit wild. So what about the, the connection with, because um, I, was, I was, and I can't remember who, who, who it was, but there was someone that I was watching the other day and she was saying, um, so she was in America and she'd had all these businesses that, that um, went bust and she had nothing and she was struggling to get out of bed. And then she developed this this rule. It was like a NASA rule where she just go five, four, three, two, one, blast a bang and get out of bed. Her name is Mel Robin. Her name is Mel Robin. Ah, good. I'm glad you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> five second rule. So you've yes. got five seconds to make any decision, like get out of bed within five seconds. Just yep. basically. Yeah. 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 So I love that theory. But one thing that I picked up on when she was saying it, she's saying um, that that she does that and gives herself five seconds before her mind has the chance to intervene and, and tell her something different. My question is, is that her mind telling her that or is that her body? Because, you know, a lot of people are living through their body instead of through their mind. What we think is, is actually our mind is our body running our lives. I don't know if you got the answer for it, but... Tell me more about that. How is your body running your life? Well... So from doing a bit of, uh, you know, or quite a bit of study with, um, with Dr. Joe Dispenza and he's saying that um, it's, it's actually your body and your emotions that are running your mind. So they're sending, so your body, your emotions will send a signal to your mind. Your mind is like, okay, yes, this is who you are. This is the emotions you feel, bang, register it and send it straight back to your body. So these thoughts and feelings that you're having is thoughts and feelings that your body's producing potentially from a past state so you're sending that up to your mind. So my question around, you know, when she's saying that, she said, you know, before your mind has a chance to switch off to that or has to have an opinion of it, my thought was, well, is it your mind that's telling you that or is it your body that's – because is it your body that wants to stay in bed for longer or is it your mind? It depends, really. Maybe your body might be crying out to stay in bed a little bit longer. But what if it's not crying out? What if you're just being lazy or you just love that extra five minutes in bed? You know, who's – what are your goals? Like what's mm. the – does it matter if you stay in bed an extra five minutes? Like no. maybe if you're looking to move past some inertia, then, yeah, it really does. Like if you want to start – if you want to change your habits, if you want to be productive, if you want to have an extra – however many hours in your year, get up, 15, mm. get up 30 minutes earlier, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Use that time effectively. But sometimes it is really important to listen to your body. Maybe your body's telling you that because all you've ever done is punish it and maybe mm. it does need rest. Mm. And so I think that, so for me, I would say that the body and the mind are pretty closely linked and I think what you touched on there, I haven't heard Dr. Jones talk about that stuff specifically, but then in terms of the parts of your brain that work, if you're working reflexively, mm -hmm. your kind of lower brain or reptilian brain that's reacting. So you are responding to something in your environment or, or something, a story in your head that you have told yourself or past, you know, habitual experiences. Yeah. Uh, that are not you're not cognitively thinking about them so in the part of your brain that does critical thinking analysis that kind of thing so it's a reflex action or an emotional action which is a kind of in the center of your brain mm -hmm. and those things are not what we would call conscious they are really linked to what's happening in your body because as soon as those parts of your brain fire that your body has a response but we don't know there's no thinking involved it's just Body, mind, yeah, reflexive action. Yeah. Um, so I think you know they don't fire; they fire almost concurrently. Like it's so fast that you wouldn't know whether it was mind or whether it was body telling you. Yeah. And they, there, there is new research that says your gut and your heart can speak. There are neurons that move from your body to your brain mm -hmm. that do send messages in this direction which traditional science has always thought it's predominantly been the other way around, like the brain tells the body what to do and then the body responds with information from the environment back to the brain and the brain's the control centre, but new science says that that's not always actually the case, that the gut has a whole, basically it has its own brain system or its own neuronal circuits that do just look after what's going on down there and when it senses what's going down there, tells the brain things as well. Sends messages up. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. So, so how, how do you how do you tap in and recognise those? Me- I mean, that's a pretty hard thing to do for for, for some people to recognise those signals. Yeah. It's just because we don't train it. If we all went to intu- intuition school as well as primary school, then yeah. we would have a great deal more connection with what our bodies tell us. If we had to do things that, I mean, we all, I guess we do sometimes have to do things that cause us to go into those reflective, reflexive actions. So, you know, if we had to, if we were in survival mode, if we had to look after ourselves in ways other than going to the supermarket to buy our groceries, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> we might, or we had, you know, had to fight for our lives in order to get our next meal, then we probably would be a little bit more familiar with what, with our sensory experiences and what information they hold for us. But we have created an environment that is so comfortable that we don't really need to listen until... So how do you so, so for the for the for the person that doesn't know how to do that and how to be intuitive with those signals? I don't know that that's this is a very open end, open ended question because it's there's a hell of a lot of learning that you can do forever. Yeah. You know what are some some easy steps to start recognizing these things when they come up? So many fun ways. Um, I think. Yeah, give us the fun ways. Like, give, well, give us the non-fun ways. <laughs> so, so many fun ways. <laughs> Come back yeah. a little bit to the, you know, the channels of information that some people resonate with. So for me, I'm really what I would call proprioceptive. So I feel things in my body and I notice when I get a particular feeling about something. I'm like, oh, I notice that, you know, thinking about this gives me like a little bit of a butterfly feeling in my stomach or I notice, you know, if something makes me sad, I feel that as a constriction in my chest mm-hmm. or if there's something, you know, something makes me shy to speak, I'll notice that as a constriction in my throat. Yeah. So over time I have learned that my body will give me signals about my, you know, emotional responses to something yeah. and that's how I can understand what's happening for me on the inside. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, ways to connect with that are to slow down be aware of what physical sensations you're having. So starting to become a little bit more familiar with actually being present in your body because that's something that is not, we are trained, my belief is that we're really trained to exist from here up yeah. in modern society. So there's a lot of expectation placed on how you are and how you can interact intellectually with the world, but there's very little training that we're given in how to be present in our own bodies. Recognise the signs when they come. Pardon? Recognise the signs when they come, when your body's talking to you. A number of things, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah. So we're not really taught to feel yeah. or not to feel what's happening in the physical body in a whole range of ways. And often in certain circumstances we're taught to ignore that, you know, like feel the fear and do it anyway, like push through the pain barrier. Like I don't know that sometimes that's really important absolutely yeah it's not necessarily it can go to the extreme where you're denying the sensations of your body until you get injured until you get sick until you get exhausted yeah and that doesn't really serve you not it does serve you in the long run because then you have to lie down for a really long time to get that up (laughs) (laughs) and then you're forced to deal with all of those things that you've been moving around or pushing through yeah. Uh, and you have to be, you basically just have to build intimacy with yourself. Yeah. So if you're a visual person, you know, someone who likes art or looking at nature, maybe you spend some time interacting with the environment. Like, you know what? I'm just going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to meditate looking at the trees. And maybe mm. there'll be some information in that for me. Yeah. It's different for each person. It doesn't have to be a set program. This is what you're doing. This is what everyone does. Do it. It's ways to receive information and if you think if you think about psychic development or if you think about it in terms of psychic development they almost associate a psychic power with each of our regular senses so you can either be clairvoyant where you see things you can be clairaudient where you hear things so it's starting to understand that you might have these other superpowers that you haven't yet tapped into yeah. and how are you going to how are you going to learn which one of those might be your most predominant channel? It's just by experimenting. Yeah. You know, yeah. How do you learn when you're a little kid what sport you're good at? 
Yeah, see yeah. what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and stick lessons. Loads of people. There's so much out there in the world to learn from at the moment. You can take intuition courses. You can take psychic development courses. You can take meditation courses. Did you learn a lot of this from, uh, from you know, throughout your own struggles through life and challenges and not struggles, I shouldn't say uh, struggles, but mostly challenges? I think being curious is a really cool quality. Yeah. So being curious and also being open. Yeah. So if something wanders along your path and it piques your interest, then investigate it. Mm. You know, it's, it could, it, who knows where it could lead? So I don't think it always has to come because of adversity. Yeah, and ideally it wouldn't come because of adversity because you're just engaging with opportunities that present themselves or creating opportunities to engage with things that interest you and that is feeding you ways to health and wellness or, you know, exploring intimacy with yourself in ways that you haven't before. Mm. allows you these opportunities to maybe not have to go down the path of most resistance in order to learn. So how do you mean like um, like with intimacy towards yourself? Like can you explain that a little bit? Um, well, how well do you really know yourself? Mm. So how, how well can you describe what sensations are happening in your body right now? Can you label your physical sensation, where they are? Yeah. What the root cause of them is? Yeah. What the challenges yeah. are. And- yeah. And are they related to... A thought? Are they related to a belief? Are they related to a value? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that can be, yeah, and that in itself is is challenging to understand that for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah and that's that's the work of learning about who you are and what has made up the building blocks of your current personality. And if you can understand that, then you can maybe decide there are some gaps there that I would like to. No, I'd like a little block over here or maybe I'd like to create a window over there so I'm going to take that block out because it actually no longer serves me. It's just something that I, it's a block that I put in back in the day because that was my coping mechanism or that's how my family learnt to taught me how to deal with things or but it actually doesn't serve who I want to be in the future so I'm going to choose to reconstruct right now based on new information because that's the beauty of the brain. There's a lot of it, yeah. Never stop learning. There's always more information. Yeah, and there's always more opportunity. I'm a huge fan of the word opportunity. Everything's an opportunity. I absolutely agree. I think there's opportunity every, every, in this, you know, this this pandemic. There's so much opportunity to further explore who we are, further explore with the people around us, further explore and and all the opportunity with you know the the, the, the connection that we can have with each other. Yeah, and with ourselves because. Yeah. As well. Yeah, because yeah, we're, like we were saying before, we're forced to spend time with ourselves. So you're forced to understand more about yourself. So there's an opportunity for growth. There is an opportunity, so you don't have to engage with it though. But and that's the thing: some people are quite content and quite happy to just be like, "Well, I don't need to know about that stuff because." <laughs> Absolutely. So, what's on the cards for you from here? Because obviously, there's a bit of a, a you know, the, the closure for for you know for everyone in Australia, and uh, and I know that you love to travel. And, yeah, uh, I don't have yet a necessarily vision of what the next little bit will look like, but I remember maybe you do know already. Like, I'm studying a. Postgraduate course in psychotherapy at the moment, which wow. is amazing. That is amazing. Really, really cool compliment to the types of things that I already do. So I've done a lot of work with the body for many years, and I've been working with the mind, I guess, through yoga and the body. Yeah. Uh, and then this feels like a really cool way of helping people help themselves. So yeah. the basis of psychotherapy is very much to look at people as whole organisms uh, and also organisms that are part of a greater whole. Mm-hmm. And as I was saying earlier in the call, not necessarily diagnose them, say, as psychology or Western science might in 
terms of people having particular conditions, but mm. meet people where they're at and offer them opportunities to investigate maybe that term that I use, intimacy, how they, you know, what's presenting for them and what does that information hold for them? How can they mine their personal or the current experiences for a little bit of wisdom? Uh, and it's really, really fun. And is that amazing to, you know, apply that because, because you know, you're working with people on a daily basis through, you know, the meditation, the yoga, and, and now through, you know, all of these new learnings, seeing seeing the effect, well, not the effect, but seeing the assistance and the help they're able to give people throughout their lives who are, you know, obviously looking for that help. Yeah, I think people who are ready to explore will call to them exactly what they need. So yeah. it's fun to have people come across my path because I feel like we're meant to work together for a reason. Yeah. Uh, and often... I, I find often I end up working with people who I can really relate to. There's maybe been a similar circumstance in my life or there's something that's alive in me that's also alive in their stories that they're sharing with me. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it feels great, but I don't feel like it's me helping them necessarily. It's them having a sounding board so that they can, it's almost like a mirror, they can, use the opportunity of engaging with someone who's holding space for them to just be who they are and express what is going on so that they can have permission to be themselves and unfold whatever it is that's appearing to its full expression because it's often when we often feel bad or end up, you know, feeling what people maybe would call trauma when we stop experiences from happening. So we're like, no, this is bad, or no, we have to lock that away because it's too painful or it's too hard to deal with the emotions that are the outfall of that circumstance or situation. So sometimes it is bringing stuff to the fore that is a little bit more challenging and painful, but it's definitely in most circumstances a better out than in. Yeah, absolutely. And once it's out and you can repair and heal some of those wounds that have been a bit raw it's pretty amazing how much or how profound the change can be yeah it's it's is it um you know is it giving people an opportunity to see the magic that there is in life yeah the magic that there is in themselves Mm. and the magic and the wisdom that in all of their experiences Mm. it's not necessarily bad no, absolutely not. You know, and, and you know, I'm a massive believer in that, that that you know we've we've all got the same gifts within ourselves. It's just sometimes they're locked up or they're behind a door. But the most fascinating part for me has been that I've been the one with the keys to the door. I'm actually the one holding the door closed. Why? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I start learning that, you're like, hey, why was I locking this door for? There's some real cool stuff in here. And staring at them, it's really, you know, beyond the edge of your awareness, what could possibly, you know, what could possibly happen? There's maybe a little, you know, story in there saying, the worst thing ever. But <laughs> maybe there's not. Maybe there's a possibility behind that door. But yeah, and I think it comes back to, like you were saying before, there's opportunity everywhere, you know, and it's, and it's you know, realising when certain thoughts come up or certain feelings come up saying, well, you don't actually have to take those thoughts and feelings on you could just recognize them and say well that's not for me so i'll just put that over there and the more that you train yourself to be able to do that yeah you don't need to take those thoughts on and that you know but that's 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 and going back to what you said about the body earlier that's that's a tricky thing because sometimes it does feel like your body is in control and your mind is betraying you you know, if you're having anxiety attacks or that kind of thing, there's, the body sensations are often really strong with those and your emotions can get tied in as well. So, you know, you've got a feeding, racing heart rate, you're crying, you're just like, ah, what is going on? And it's very, very hard in that moment to just be like, okay, brain, just think something different. <laughs> yeah, the it's- conscious mind is offline. That is it's just not where that happens. It also, it's you know, your meditation practice is your training ground, but in the moment, 
teach, well, I guess I try and equip people with tools, like a toolbox of techniques that they can use depending on the scenario that arises for them. And sometimes that some of those are just self-soothing. It's like, okay, well, yeah, I am maybe noticing that I have a panic attack and some of the smaller symptoms that live within that are like, oh, yes, my heart's beating really, really fast. Oh, I've stopped breathing. How can I breathe differently? And maybe I can interrupt the cascade of symptoms kind of snowballing if I just take a deeper breath right now. Or maybe if, you know, my desire is to curl into a little ball which stops me being able to breathe, my diaphragm's all sloshed. Mm. And instead of doing that, I just have to sit my posture out. Yeah. And, oh, wow, that just creates a whole new ability for me to be spacious right now. And, oh, all of a sudden I'm a little bit calmer because I can relax my abdomen and breathe more deeply or... And maybe then your conscious mind can come back on and you're just like, okay, yeah, I'm talking in front of a crowd of people. It's not that bad. Maybe I can go on stage and use my other techniques for imagining that it's... Change a mindset or change an environment or... Yeah, and sometimes when things are really tough, it does require something like changing your environment and that's decisions that we all have to take at different points in our lives. They're not easy, but sometimes they can be really healthy even if they are very challenging to have to make. Mm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Absolutely. But like you said, there's uh, there's opportunity everywhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that word heavily going forward because I like it a lot. <laughs> well, it's, it's yeah. a, like you've been on my retreats, I can be a little bit like strict. <laughs> uh, you know, you can be really strict at certain times, but we won't go into that. Um, but I do like to frame everything as an opportunity. I'm like, okay, well, you guys are all adults. Yeah. You can choose to engage. You know, I created this experience for you to get the most out of and everything I'm, that's on offer here is an opportunity for you to engage with. But if you want to be on your phone the whole time, that's your choice. Like you have the opportunity to have a week of offline in paradise. Yeah. You mark that what might, ha- what, what might come from that. But And that's so that's a hard thing, right, because, um, you know, you can see people that, that that you really want to help or that you want to show and give guidance to. And I'm not sure if you've come up with this on, on your journey, maybe you have, and you can start to give them time and give them all these tools, but you actually see, hey, uh, shit, these guys don't want to, they don't want to change, they don't want to move, they want to just keep sitting on their phone or they want to do this, they want to do that. That's a hard thing to combat too, yeah? It's, it's okay. Everyone's going to come to, everyone has their own journey and own process. It's not my responsibility to, and that's why I like the word opportunity. It's not my responsibility to tell someone to do something differently or to encourage them to walk a different path. Yeah. The information, I'm providing information, and if they want to engage with it, then yeah. they can. Lots of, the, lots of it comes from my own personal experience. Lots of it comes with like two and a half thousand years worth of it. Let's get some good backup. <laughs> like, you can believe me, you can believe the scripture, yoga scriptures, you can just experiment for yourself, or you can scroll on your phone. Yeah. Up to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you've got to be ready too, right? Well, yeah, and, it's, and that's the thing. People are, people will come to things in their own time. Mm. That's amazing for someone to even come on a yoga retreat. That's a huge commitment. Yeah, huge. To even walk through that door or chosen that for themselves is amazing in itself. And if that period of time is too confronting for them to be with themselves, then that's okay. There'll be another time or another opportunity or they might not. Like that's not my job to, yeah. That was just, that was something. Give them the guidance and... I mean, that's something I just consciously decided when I started running events and retreats like that. It's it's like I've provided the container and you can choose to engage with it as you like. I've provided it for a specific set of reasons that I know can be really beneficial if you choose to engage with it, but it's not my job to make you. Because I could. Like I could be like, hi, here's the basket. Put all your phones in. See, like you'll see them next week. And it makes my life really easy because... (laughs) way easier to communicate with people who are not distracted yeah and it's so rich when people can just be present it's incredible yeah it's really hard to find a retreat venue anywhere in the world that doesn't have internet access anymore <laughs> oh yeah it's impossible right i don't 
want to deal with the pouting for three days when people. <laughs> and if that's what they want, that's what they want. Like, you know. Right. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys can choose. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I like that. Now, I've got one last super, super, super important question for you. And we ask everyone the same question. What is your favourite pasta dish? Oh, good question. Yeah. I really like lasagna. Oh, matter? winner. Yeah, delish. I yeah. love pasta. I do like, I love gnocchi. I could just yes. eat one. <laughs> 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 that was my top two, and Ange was the same, and I think someone else was the same with gnocchi, but lasagna and gnocchi have to be top two. Yeah, so good. And that's, you know, that's one thing that I talked to uh, to Ange a lot about was, you know, the, you know, obviously food and organic food because that's, you know, the business that she's in, but also soul food and how oh. enriching it is oh, no. having a plate of pasta and just what, what it can do for your soul. I'm a mad foodie, so (laughs) 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 no one goes hungry on my retreats. I don't do like two shots of treats, just quietly. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a good thing. Oh, you think you think on them? Like food's lovely. Food is amazing. Yeah, and uh, I think it's really important. I think it's great. I take great pleasure in eating, growing food, making food communicating over food, you know, gathering people together. I think it's such a beautiful way to be in communion with people. Absolutely. And it's such a beautiful way to, you know, nourish yourself in different ways. Well, it's hard to, you know, it's. I think it's a really, really difficult thing to get a bunch of people at a table with some amazing food and not have everyone super happy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like the catalyst for, for, for love and happiness, isn't it? Sure. If you are feeling shit, let's sit down with a bunch of cool people and let's eat some pasta. Yes. Like, what could be better? Pasta's our love. No. <laughs> <laughs> and if you feel bad about it, you go for a run the next day. <laughs> or you do some yoga. Yeah, yeah, indeed. For sure. I mean, that's why I ran a retreat in Italy. Like, yeah, in- wow. Well. Hey. So going forward, plans for next retreat, locations, you've got to have some in mind, surely. No, to be honest, I've been, that's been just kind of filtering back into my realm of possibility, I suppose. And I think things I'm really keen to, with some of the stuff that we've talked about today and stuff I'm really keen to talk to people about. So how to, I think one of the next courses I'm going to run is kind of how to befriend your nervous system, like making friends with your nervous system, figuring out what it's telling you and why. Yeah how you can talk back whether that's through your breathing or yeah. your mindset yeah um so i think yeah maybe it'll be meditation nervous system regulation based stuff sounds exciting and maybe it'll be in queensland we'll see it's hard to know just at the moment what's what's happening with the world in terms of moving around and that kind of thing. So I don't want to project myself too far into the future just yet. Yeah. Um, in term, but I really, I have, I've just kind of started to miss because I was meant to be on a yacht in Croatia running oh. in August, which was oh. divine. But yeah. um, obviously that wasn't so possible this year. No. But, so it does. It has felt like quite a while since I've got to have one of those. Really, they're just such beautiful experiences, mm. uh, and I have been starting to miss that recently. And I've had a few retreat venues filter into my world, which is one of the benefits of things like social media. You get exposed to exciting new things, exciting new opportunities. Uh, yeah. So I am leaving that open to ideas and possibility at the moment. Yeah. But there's nothing set in stone just yet. So I'm going to – I'll probably wait till the end of this year to feel out kind of how next year might unfold. Yeah, but lots of opportunity. See, there I go again. Yeah, everything. Always opportunity. Yeah. Your eyes eyes are – and heart are open. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I won't keep it because I know that you've got another uh, another meeting to get to, but um, it was amazing to catch up and thank you for your time. Hang out with you and thank you so much for having me. And, and uh, I'm 
love what you're doing. You guys are incredible and inspirational. I'm so proud of you. And uh, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of good fun, and we get to connect with you know a lot of really cool and amazing people. And you know, if, if someone gets one thing out of each of these, amazing. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Well, maybe our net, my next retreat should be an eating. And, ah, I'm yeah. there. I'm yeah. there. I'm there. <laughs> if it's eating, if this is an eating retreat, I'm, I'm there. Like I'll let.